first question, a form of oligarchy in which gifted people are the aim of affairs is called Dash. So it will not be gerontocracy because gerontocracy has to do with government led by few old, adult, elderly, or senior citizens. It will not be plutocracy because plutocracy has to do with a government led by few rich or wealthy citizens. It won't be theocracy. Why? Because theocracy has to do with government led by few religious leaders. So having eliminated three options, we are left with aristocracy. And the answer is what? Aristocracy. Now let me attempt a definition of aristocracy. It's a type of government led by few educated persons, a type of government led by few gifted persons, a type of government led by the best citizens, a type of government led by few elites, a type of government led by few nobles, and a system of governments propounded by a Greek philosopher known as Aristotle, in which philosophers are kings. So the second question, a state that is ruled by an elected citizen is dash. So it can't be a monarchy. Why? Monarchy has to do with a type of government led by a monarch who could be a king or queen, emperor or empress. So are monarchs elected? They are not. Under monarchy, powers are inherited, or you could say they are hereditary. So we nullify A. It can't be plutocracy. Why will it not be plutocracy? I've said it earlier that plutocracy has to do with government led by few rich or wealthy persons. And mind you, plutocracy was propounded by a Greek philosopher known as Plato. Having eliminated B, it can't be D, an empire. So the last option that we have is a republic. So what is a republic? A republic is a state that is ruled by an elected citizen. Now let me give you another definition of a republic. A republic is a dispensation in which citizens freely elect their leaders. You would have observed that we have first republic in Nigeria, second republic, third republic, and currently we are in the fourth republic. Why, why do we have diverse republics? The reason is this. Any period in time in which citizens elect their leaders, it is called a republic. So it means the period in which the military forcefully took over power cannot be classified as a republic. So from 1960 to 1966, we had elected leaders. Tafar Bale was our prime minister. And in 1966, the military struck and they took over power. So while the military were in power from 66 to 79, from 83, to 93 and from 93 to 99 we cannot classify those periods as republic because we did not elect military leaders but any period from 60 to 66 first republic 79 to 83 second republic 93 third republic and from 99 to date fourth republic so a state ruled by an elected citizen is a republic third question a fundamental component of political culture is dash now, when we say political culture, culture has to do with the values of a group of people who, who live in a particular place at a particular time. Now, imagine political with the word culture. Political culture will now entail the val political values of a people, political beliefs, political ideas, political norms, political orientations, political attitudes, political affections, political skills, and so on and so forth. So the com fundamental component of political culture is what? Social values, social values, social beliefs, social skills, social orientations, social affections, social attitudes, and so on and so forth. So number four, a true democracy in the modern sense exists where the dash. Now, you have to first of all travel over 2,500 years ago and you will find yourself in an ancient nation or state called Greece where democracy originated from a city called Athens. And in the city of Athens, they practiced a type of democracy called direct democracy in which citizens were directly involved in choosing their leaders. But as societies became larger, all the citizens could no longer be directly involved because how do you gather 
5 million persons in a particular place to decide on a particular issue. So the meaning of this will be that in the modern sense, the people or the citizens would now elect representatives to govern on their behalf. So a true democracy in the modern sense exists where a elected representatives rule. So the fifth question. In a parliamentary system, when the legislation passes a vote of no confidence on the executive, it means that the dash. Now, you have to know that a parliamentary system is also called cabinet system or Westminster system of government. Or you could also tag it as bicephalous executive. How do you remove the executive head under a parliamentary system of government through a vote of no confidence? So when the legislation pass, successfully passes a vote of no confidence on the, on the executive, what will follow? The executive is expected to resign. So where is the correct answer here? The executive, C, is expected to do what? To resign. Now, that is how to remove the executive under parliamentary. How do you remove executive under presidential? Through impeachment. Now, to the sixth question. The legislative body of the United States of America is the dash. It is Congress. So the legislature of U.S. is called Congress. While that of Nigeria is called National Assembly. While that of United Kingdom is called Parliament. So the correct answer here is what? Congress. Now to the seventh question. Unicameralism is a feature of the legislature in dash. First of all, students, you will need to understand what we mean by unicameralism. It has to do with a legislative body with one chamber or one house. A legislature with one chamber. It is opposed to bicameralism, which means a legislature with two chambers. Now, let's leave bicameralism and come to unicameralism. So, unicameralism is a feature of the legislature in, in Israel. So, it is a feature in Kenya. It's a feature in Israel. It is a feature in Bulgaria. It is also a feature in Sweden. While bicameralism is a feature in USA, it's a feature in Nigeria, and it's a feature in the United Kingdom. Now, to the eighth question. The upper house in most federal systems is created to dash. Now, under bicameralism, like in Nigeria, in UK and in US. The legislature is divided into two chambers, the upper house and the lower house. Let us take Nigeria as an example. The upper house in Nigeria is called the Senate, while the lower house in Nigeria is called the House of Reps. Now, at the level of the Senate, each state are expected to produce three senators each. Whether the states be as small as Bayesa with eight local governments or as much as Kano with 44 local governments. Whether the state is as small as Ekiti with 16 local governments or Katsina with 33 local governments. All the states will produce three senators each. Now, what does this tell us? It shows us that at the level of the upper house, under federalism, all states are equal. There is equality of federating units. So, the upper house in most federal states is created to do what? Ensure equality of federating units. Option A, that's the correct answer. To the ninth question, in which of the following systems is the power of the component unit more than that of the central? Power of the component more than that of the central. Now, under a unitary system, all political, governmental, and administrative powers are fused, amalgamated, unified, coalesced together in a single entity. So, are powers divided under unitary? No. All powers are in a single place, in the hands of the single central government. That's for unitary system. Under federal system, governmental powers are divided between the central government and the component parts. Though the federal is still a little bit stronger than the states. While under confederal system of governments, the component parts are a little bit stronger than the central government. So, under which system do we have the component parts having more powers than the central government? The answer is confederal system of government. Now, to the tenth question. 
one of the general tenets of fascist doctrine is that the leader is dash. Now, when we say fascist doctrine, that entails the, the doctrine of fascism. Fascism was practiced in Germany between, between the 1930s and the 1940s, in Nazi Germany, when Benito Mussolini was the head of Italy. So Nazism was practiced in Germany, while fascism was practiced in Italy. Now, both Nazism and fascism, what do they both entail? They entail political, governmental, and administrative powers are concentrated in the hands of a single leader who are exercises total control over all aspects of the citizens' lives. So it means under fascism, as well as Nazism, the leader is supreme. The leader is, could be said to be above the law. The leader controls all aspects of citizens' lives, and the fundamental human rights are not guaranteed. Now, back to this question. The tenet of fascist doctrine is that what? The leader, compared to the constitution, is supreme. The leader is supreme relative to the constitution. Now, to the 11th question. In a cabinet system of government, executive power is exercised by the dash. Now, I think I've said it earlier that when you see cabinet system of government, it is also classified as parliamentary system of government or Westminster system of government. So a question could just prop up like in a Westminster system of government, the answer will still be the same. In a parliamentary system of government, the answer will still be what? Be the same. So executive power is exercised by the dash. So under a parliamentary system of government, we have two heads. There is the head of state and there is the head of government. The head of state carries out ceremonial functions, titular functions, or nominal functions, while the head of government carries out real administrative or executive functions. So executive power is exercised by the head of government. Head of state will carry out ceremonial functions. Head of government will carry out executive functions. A good example of a country practicing cabinet, parliamentary or Westminster system of government is the United Kingdom, where the head of state is the king of England and the head of government is the prime minister of England. The head of state is king of England, while the head of government is Rishi Sunak, the prime minister of England. Nigeria also practiced this type of government between 1960 and 1966. Between 1960 and 1963, our Prime Minister was Tafawa Balewa. He was exercising executive functions, while our head of state was the Queen of England, represented by an indigenous governor general called Dr. Unamdi Azikwe. That was between 60, 1960 and 1963. And from 1963 to 1966, Tafawa was still our head of government, our Prime Minister. But our head of state now changed from the Queen of England to a ceremonial president called Dr. Namdi Azikiwe. So it means under a cabinet system of governments, the head of government is the prime minister. Mind you, what we re refer to as prime minister in English is derived from the Latin phrase called primus inter pares, primus inter pares, which when translated means first among equals. Now to the twelfth question. The principle of separation of powers is best practiced in the dash. Now, separation of powers is a concept that was propounded by a French philosopher called Baron de Montesquieu. Baron de Montesquieu propounded separation of powers as well as checks and balances in his book titled in French, Esprit de Loi, and when translated into English means spirit of laws. So what does separation of powers mean? From the word separated when we say powers are separated we mean the powers of the organs of government are separated from each other so it means that the legislature will function as the law making body the executive cannot encroach on the duty of the legislature while the judiciary cannot encroach on the duty of the executive is that clear the opposite of separation of powers is fusion of powers it means you can be under the legislature in uk and also be under the executive. But under a presidential system of government, you cannot function under the executive and also function under any other of governments. Is that clear? So the principle of separation of powers is best practiced in a presidential system of government. So if the question had come out like this, that checks and balances is best practiced, the answer is also what? 
presidential system of government because both separation of powers and checks and balances they were propounded by the same person and they are associated with the system of government called presidentialism so the 13th question a typical form of delegated legislation now what is legislation legislation refers to the process of law making who should make laws in the society it should be the legislature are you getting now? So, who carries out legislation? The legislature. But can we have instances whereby the work of making laws could be quote, too cumbersome, too encumbering, too tedious for the legislature? So much that they would, they would now opt to delegate part of the lawmaking responsibilities to other organs. Yes, we can have such instances. So, when any entity or institution or any body Aside from the legislation makes a law, such laws are called delegated legislation. I'll take it again. When the legislation makes a law, that is legislation. When any entity, aside from the legislation makes a law, that is delegated legislation. And a type of delegated legislation here is by law. By laws are laws made by the local government. Over to the 14th question. The rights of a citizen can be withdrawn by the state if the person dash. Now, as citizens, are we entitled to fundamental human rights? Yes. Are those rights enshrined in our constitution? Yes. But can we have instances whereby those rights could, could be trampled upon or that could make us to be denied of such rights? It is possible. I'll use this right as an example. As citizens, do we have freedom of movement? Yes. But in a, in a situation or an instance whereby we are convicted of crime and we are sentenced to prison, can we move about freely in the prison? No. That shows us that our rights to freedom of movement can be in, in, in impeded when we are convicted of a serious crime. So the answer to this is that the right of a citizen can be withdrawn if the person is convicted of a serious crime. Crime. Over to the 15th question. An electoral process in which candidates are selected for elective offices by party members is called DASH. The answer is primary election. Now, let me make a contradistinction and juxtaposition between primary election and general election. Let's say, for instance, we have three political parties in Nigeria, Labour Party, PDP, and APC. And let us say that presidential elections are coming up soonest, for example. So, which candidates will be presented by Labour Party in the general election? That candidate will be selected in a type of election called primary election. So it means 20 persons under Labour Party might come together under primary election. For Labour Party to arrive at one out of many, 20 people under PDP, for PDP to arrive at one. So that type of internal election conducted to choose who will represent a political party in the general election is called what? primary election. So primary election is within a political party, while general election is amongst political parties. Over to the 16th question. Which of the following is the main function of the civil service? Now you have to know as government students that the civil service as an institution or an establishment comes up under the executive arm of government. Now what is the major function of the executive arm? The legislation will make laws executive we implement or execute laws while the judiciary will interpret laws since it is the duty of the judiciary of the executive to implement laws it means every other institution under the executive will work towards the implementation of laws so the major function of the civil service is to formulate policies for the government and to implement such policies now when we now dig deeper into the civil service we have different strata and cadres. So if, if we are asked the question that which cadre under the civil service is involved in formulating policies, don't forget, civil service as an entity, they formulate and they implement. But under civil service, the cadre that formulates policies is called the administrative cadre. While the cadre or class that implements policies are called the executive Cater. So, the main function of the civil service here is to implement government policies. What if we do not come across implement? What if you see formulate government policies? They are also what? Also correct. Over to the 17th question. 
in which of the following is the ceremonial and executive powers fused? When we say fused, fused means joined, amalgamated, constellated. Is that clear? So, under parliamentary system of governments, we have the head of states different from the head of governments. So it means the head of state and the head of government are not fused. Mind you, head of state will perform ceremonial functions, head of government will perform executive functions. But in Nigeria, under parliament presidential system of governments, the executive functions and the ceremonial functions are fused together. So in which of the following is the ceremonial and executive powers fused? The answer is presidential system of government. But if the question had cropped up like this, that in which of the following system do we have ceremonial and executive power separated? The answer would have been parliamentary. But fused together, that's presidential. For example, in Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari is our head of state. When it comes to Independence Day celebrations, Armed Forces Remembrance Day, welcoming foreign presidents, those are ceremonial functions. He will carry them out as head of state. But when it comes to executive functions, signing budget, executing projects, he will also carry those things out. But if we go to the United Kingdom, it is the King of England that carries out ceremonial functions, while it is the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, who carries out executive functions. So you could say in UK, Ceremonial and executive functions are separated, while in Nigeria, under presidential system, ceremonial and executive functions are what? They are fused. Now, to the 18th question. A major contentious issue confronting Nigeria federalism is resource control. If you don't see resource control, you can choose revenue allocation. So there has been, there has been contention, particularly between the littoral states. The littoral state has to do with those states around the, 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 the mangrove region of Nigeria that share border with the Atlantic Ocean. Those states could be termed the oil producing states. They have always been at, at, at a log ahead with the federal government that since their states are producing crude oil for Nigeria, they should earn more when it comes to allocation than other states that are not oil producing. So there has always been a problem over how to control our resources between the oil producing states and the federal government. So you see that you say resource control, revenue allocation, or derivation problem. So the correct answer here is revenue allocation. Over to the 19th question. The main purpose of establishing public enterprises. Now, under the executive, we have civil service and public corporations. So for your knowledge, public corporations are also called public enterprises. Is that clear? Any government establishment or agency that is established to provide social amenities for the citizens at subsidized cost is called what? Public corporation or public enterprise. I'll take that again. Any government establishment set up to render social services or provide public amenities for the citizens is called what? public enterprise. Now, a public corporation like the water, Ekiti State Water Corporation or Ogun State Water Corporation, are they providing a public utility like water for the people? Yes. Now, while providing water, will they create jobs? Yes. Will they generate revenue for the government? Yes. But which one is their major function? The major reason why they are established is to provide social amenities. Social amenities are also called social services. Social services are also called essential services or public amenities. So the major reason for establishing public enterprises or public corporations is to provide essential services like light, electricity, water, and so on and so forth. Now to the 20th question. The highest organ of the state under the Babangida regime. Now, we are talking about military regimes, okay? Between 1966, under Agui Yerosi, later on Gowon, later on Moritala, later on Obasanjo, from 1966 to 79, Nigeria, the highest lawmaking organ under these regimes were the supreme, was the Supreme Military Council, SMC. When Buhari came in in 1983, from 83 to 85, Buhari also adopted Supreme Military Council. When Babangida came in in 85, from 85 to 93, 
the highest lawmaking organ under the Babangida regime was the Armed Forces Ruling Council. Now, let me give us an OT. Just know it at the back of your mind that the only military regime that used Armed Forces Ruling Council was Babangida regime. While the only military regime that used PRC, Provisional Ruling Council, was the Abasha regime. All other regimes, they, they had the Supreme Military Council from Aguye Ronsi to General Yakubu Gowon to General Muritala Mohamed to General Leshebon Basanjo to Major General Muritala um, Mamadou Buhari to General Abdusalam Abubakar. They all use SMC, Supreme Military Council, Babangida AFRC, Armed Forces Ruling Council, and Abasha PRC, Provisional Ruling Council. So the correct answer here is Armed Forces Ruling Council.